Sport. Sport has changed. It's no longer about fan bases, camaraderie, and passion. It's an endless series of labor stoppages fought by greed and ego. Sport and its consumption of dollars has become a well-oiled machine. Overly sponsored games carried by overly sponsored networks, using sponsored gear. The lust for more revenue consumes and controls their desires. Concussion control. Information control. Stadium control. Local populace control. Everything is monitored and kept under control. Sport has changed. The Chargers yearn for this age of control. All in the name of a $1.1 billion stadium in San Diego. Of course, this was when the city told these spineless sacks of shit to fuck off the Coronado Bridge. They were right, San Diego was never going to recoup the devastating cost Measure C would have flung on them. The Chargers were going to break their hearts once again. At this point, after doing years of fuck all and expecting a stadium to fall into his lap, Dean Spanos throws his hands into the air and says, Whoop, I tried. Forget lowballing Joey Bosa and contract negotiations. It was time for them to find their outer heaven, a land for football and glory aplenty. For now, they have found it. Go fuck yourself, San Diego. Los Angeles, the city of angels, a fertile land that is yearning for a second team in two years. They want a team that will make the city proud to call its own, a group that has a rich tradition and loyal following in the area. They wanted the Raiders. What they got was their forgettable cousin to the south. True, the Chargers did start in Los Angeles, but they were there for a year back in the 1960s. Obviously not the homegrown fan base they were desiring. Besides the Rams and Raiders, they were the most popular team in the region. After the Seahawks, Broncos, Cowboys, Steelers, 49ers, Cardinals, Giants, and you get the goddamn point. Also gotta mention the Patriots, because damn the Patriots. What the Chargers did is the tried and true saga of every vapid two-bit floozy that thinks they're hot shit and moves to LA to fulfill their delusions of grandeur. Sit down and listen for a second, child. The thing about Los Angeles is that unless you are a proven commodity, the city will eat you alive. LA has no time for wannabes. There are far too many options for Angelinos to even feign attention to the arrogant small-time starlet. Even worse, the Chargers effectively destroyed their old mother base in a fire of fury. The last thing San Diegans appreciate is another professional franchise fucking off to play second fiddle in their older brother's house. They now have to start over in a 30,000 seat soccer stadium for a few years before paying rent to the Rams to use their metal gear. The Chargers have reached liquid stage. Little did they know that the mockery and derision would be far from over. In the safest terms possible, the fight for LA has been an unmitigated disaster. The Spanos family was greatly overconfident in how the area would embrace the team. When an NFL squad fails to sell out their inaugural preseason game regardless of location, giant alarm bells should be ringing. They continued throughout the season, a mother base that was constantly invaded and griefed by opposing teams. And former fans would troll Spanos in the skies above the stadium. And the FAA would allow it because StubHub Center was too small for their regulations. The Spanos family got a rude awakening in LA. The city didn't give a fuck. Let's just say they were the first team to play 16 away games in a season. Sections of the stadium were either loaded with opposing fans or tarped off because they couldn't sell a grossly overpriced experience. Seriously, $100 to fucking park? It got so bad for the Chargers that there were rumblings that they would be forced to move back to San Diego, a city that was relishing in their failings. Everyone felt the Chargers moving to LA was a really stupid idea, but no one knew it would be like this. Why are we still here? Just to suffer? The true dagger in the heart of the Chargers came in the form of their future landlord, the Rams. A team that had long been the equivalent of Jeff Fisher suddenly got good. Their genome soldiers were loaded with the latest nano machines to dominate the league. Los Angeles had their true team back as they showcased one of the more exciting offenses in football. The Chargers, an 0-4 start as they hit rock bottom. But then something interesting happened. The mercenaries and their so-called recessive genes started rattling off wins. Suddenly, a team that was forgotten and maligned had a chance at winning the goddamn division. True, they had a paper soft schedule, but going 9-3 and three is still no small feat. Then comes the injection of Fox Die. Their terrible luck from San Diego also came with them. The Chargers missed the playoffs via tiebreaker. This was one of the hottest teams in the league for the second half. How in God's name did they miss the playoffs? Second time, and it is no go! No, I honestly can't think of anything that would hold them back. On the way! It definitely doesn't have to do with them having double agents as kickers. Lambo's kick partially deflected, and it still goes through! Lambo! Wait, it's like a damn fiddle! Do you want to know who I truly feel bad for in this situation? 
the players. They didn't ask for this, they didn't choose this fate for themselves, they merely wished to fulfill their childhood dreams of playing in the NFL. Little do they all know they are now locked into a total quagmire. Let's say the Chargers get buyer's remorse and move back to San Diego. If you thought the attendance in StubHub Center was pathetic, just wait until they return to Qualcomm. Remember, their last game in that city was dominated by Chiefs fans. San Diegans had enough of the Spanos family and their shit. The only way that San Diego re-embraces the Chargers is if Dean Spanos is gone or walks around in a cardboard box. Even then, what are the options? LA doesn't want anything to do with them, and the NFL will stubbornly try anything to make sure this venture isn't a failure. Remember, all but one team approved of this move, this slap in the face to every San Diegan by the league. This team is Metal Gear Survive, an entity no one wanted that's years late on trends and suffers deserved backlash as a result. They chased after a market that once didn't have a football team for 20 years and has a team already establishing dominance, yet many of their old players will forever rue their name or call them the San Diego Chargers. Congratulations, you are football's version of the Clippers. All we can hope for is that, like Donald Sterling, Dean Spanos is revealed to be a massive racist, but I fear he is too spineless to even be that. It's sad because this team has a lot of talent and their players seem to be a relatively likable bunch. That defense in particular is fucking stacked. The Chargers should be the lovable underdog of the league, yet they are nothing more than a tragic afterthought. And it's all Dean Spanos' fault. This is where you shouldn't feel bad if you don the Charger Bolt. You should embrace it. You're a team without a nation, the ultimate mercenary squad. You are the Diamond Dogs, a team not held back by borders or cities or any physical barriers. You aren't tools of the league or anyone else. You fight for yourselves. You fight for your future. It's what you believe in. You fight to prove everyone wrong. Unit lost. Typical Charger luck. Curse their recessive genes. You mustn't allow yourself to be chained to fate, to be ruled by your genes. Humans can choose the type of life they want to live. The important thing is that you choose life, and then live. Hello? Fuck you, Spanos! Good news, 2017 just called me. They want their forced meme back.